Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is going to be my quick review of Insecure Season 5, Episode 3, Pressure. Okay, so y'all know first things first. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. It's become a whole J Bird, J Bird. Dun, 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 dun. And the link to Jay Lee's Corner Talk is always in the description box below. I want y'all to, you know, do all these things right here. You know, liking and commenting and sharing, relaxing and centering yourself and inhaling because, you know, those are things I try to do all the time. Okay. Do not forget to also uh, follow me on social media at Jay Lee's Corner. The links to that is also in the description box below. Y'all know, like the video and subscribe. It is 724 in the morning. I've been up since, I think, 1.30? I don't know. Maybe 11 o'clock. I can't remember. This daylight saving time has me all messed up, okay? So while I am here, okay, and whatnot, I'm going to probably be off screen a lot because I want to go to sleep. <laughs> I want to go to sleep because I'm like, it is so early enough for so long. Um, But what time did I get back up? I took a nap at like 8.30, and woke up at like midnight. So it just it's weird. You know, I'm used to getting, you know, like three or four hours of sleep. So when I take naps, that's like my sleep. So I wake up, but I'm just up for hours. So honey, I need to get it together. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get into the foolishness. Not the was well, it wasn't really foolishness, but I feel like this episode was needed um to explain what's going on with Kandula Condola. And Lawrence. So last we saw Lawrence was Issa using him from for, for a ride from the airport and then breaking up with him or whatever. And then we've seen how Issa's life had progressed over the past year. Now we're seeing what's going on with Lawrence. What happened with him? So we see Lawrence is up here on a date with a lady or whatever, chitting, chatting, real nervous, like or whatever. It was a boring date to me, but I'm gonna leave that be. Okay. He then gets a text. Ding, ding, ding. Your baby has arrived. I'm like, what? The baby has arrived. So, yeah, he had moved to San Francisco. He's working or whatever, living his life like it's golden. And ding, ding, ding. While on a day he finds out via text, his baby was born, okay? So, he goes, you know, I got to go. My baby's being born. Oh, that would be so funny. He's like, no, for real. I'll drop his money off. Good day, good day. I gotta go. And he goes to he goes to the hospital where his condola condola is there with her mom played by Layla Roshan and her sister played by Kiki Palmer. Now Kiki Palmer reached out on social media to Issa, like you should really put me on season five, okay? And they put her in as Condola Condola's sister, okay? And when I seen Layla Roshan, I'm like, oh Layla Roshan, hey. And I was like, where is um, Nicole Murphy, and then that made me think Nicole Murphy has the exact same voice as Jada Pinkett Smith's mama's gammy. That the same, honey. I swear those were the thoughts when I seen Layla Roshan. I don't know why, but it was. But I'm happy to see Layla Roshan on my television. Okay. Anyway, this is the first time that Lawrence is meeting her mom and her sister because remember him and Condola Condola wasn't dating for that long, okay? So they really don't even know each other that well. So the first time her mom and sister meeting him was right when what? The baby was born. Now, the baby came early, okay? Early born baby. Now, we don't know was the baby really premature or was Condola Condola further along than we knew. I'm really wondering if in the end they're going to say, that's not even Lauren's baby, okay? It ain't even his baby. But we don't know, again, if it was a preemie or, you know, just, you know, she misconstrued the time frame and banged other people, and it's not his baby, okay? Anyway, he meets his son, who they named Elijah Mufasa. I'm like, from the Lion King? Okay, if you say so. Um, he is happy to meet his baby, but also nervous, too, because, again, this is an awkward situation. You can tell him and Kandula Kandola have not had much conversation over the past months of her being pregnant. But don't forget, at the end of last season, when she told him she was pregnant, she told him, I don't expect anything from you. I can raise my baby myself. And he did tell her, I don't want children. 
I didn't want kids. She also told him that she was married and got divorced because the husband wanted children and she did not. So now that she met him, boom, it's a baby. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. Your baby is here. So he goes to his friend's house. You know, the is his name Chuck? Not Chuck. I don't know what his friend's name is. But y'all know the friend. Anyway, he over there with the, is it Claude? Cliff, I don't know. Anyway, because again, he lives in San Francisco. Now he's back in LA. And he's just saying how, you know, he just feels like he doesn't have any say so. How she named the baby without without talking to him and all these things. And how he wants to be as involved as he can, even though he doesn't live in the same city. He would have to fly back and forth to be a father. But like, I want to be involved with everything, everything. So they go to a little, you know, doctor's appointment or whatever. And you can tell Kandula Kandola is living life as the mom. Okay, she's not really consulting Lauren on anything. It's just, you know, this is my doctor, this and that, that. And it's because she he didn't know the baby was having a hard time either latching on or her producing breast milk. So he's like, is something wrong? She would just say different. So again, it's just showing how they're not communicating. He's not asking her shit. She ain't telling him shit. Back and forth of them not being good co-parents because it's their first child. And again, we have to remember, they were not dating that long. So it's still like they're strangers. And now they're connected forever. Be careful who you have children with. So we see this disconnect between them and the baby because she wants to do her. He wants to be involved. He know he can only be involved when he's in town. So he tells her, hey, I want to come to town every week to see the baby. Okay. Until I'm able to like, you know, get him on my own. So we can we can talk about that a little later. But you see this the disconnect. And I'm like, girl, it's a train wreck on the way. And so even when he brings about his parents, want them to have a christening, and she's already set one up. He's like, without talk to me? She's like, well, yeah. So I feel like it's hard to blame one person. I think they're both to blame. But I do feel like Kandula Kandola is being the dominant parent because she's the one who has the baby and it almost feels like she doesn't want Lawrence to be involved and so him being a part-time you know every week dad is fine with her until is not okay and so the whole little christian or whatever when he again brings up how he wants to you know eventually be able to take the baby for like a week take the baby to meet his people and, and spend time with his family and her people like um are you sure? I don't know. Not even the sister played like Kiki Palmer. You know, you better than me because if it was me, I would have been bust out some windows. Because again, they now feel like, okay, he's up, you know, in one week, out one week, in one week. He's coming and going as he sees fit. But Kandula Kandola is the one having to be the, the always parent, you know, doing the hard part of parenting. Okay. And so, Later on, when you know she texts him and say, "Hey," and we also see at at home, Lawrence bought a crib. He put the crib together. He's making space for his son because he wants to get his son. But Kandula Kandula never really wants him to get. She don't trust that man at all with that baby. Okay, so when she texts him and say, "You know, Kelly, not Kelly, uh, mm -hmm. Tiffany and um, our dear are having a, a party for their daughter," you know, do you want to go together? He's like, "With Elijah." And she was like, yeah, a part of me feel like she wants him to want them to be a family. And because that's not what he's doing, he, he took the job he had out of, out of the city. He is living his life regardless of the fact that he has a whole baby. <laughs> he didn't change his plans for his kid. And I think a part of her didn't care if he did that, but she thought that before the baby was born. Now that he's here, I think she resents him for not changing his plans for the baby that he didn't want. I think a part of him resents her, as we find out later on, for her going ahead and having a baby, which changed his life. Again, this is what happens when you have sex with strangers and you don't use condoms. Anyway, so he agreed to go to the party with her and the baby together. They're not a couple. They're not a couple, but they there. Um, Kelly was funny in this part. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to move on past that. Um, but we see that 
he takes the baby to get a bottle or whatever. And on the way back, he gives the baby some care, like baby food, carrots or whatever. She freaks out because, you know, I didn't agree, you know, to have him eat, you know, uh, solid food. Jay. Like the doctor said, it's fine after four months. So it's not a big deal. Like he, he liked carrots and, you know, he's okay. The baby's okay. Da, da, da. And she's freaking out and being pissed. And so they're standing there at Tiffany and Derek's daughter's party fussing because he gave the baby carrots, <laughs> baby food, mush, mush carrots. And he's like, it's okay. The baby's fine or whatever. The doctor said it's okay. So again, they're not communicating the right way. So they're fussing and fighting because they don't know how to co-parent. Because again, I do feel like, again, Lawrence, the part-time father and Condola Condola wants him to be involved, but then again, does not want him to be involved, and she wants to make all the decisions, and she just doesn't trust him with the baby. Now, he talks to Derek, because Derek sees him fussing, and so Derek kind of pulls him away, and say, like, look, you can't overreact to how she reacts, because she's the parent or whatever, she may be on bullshit, you know, but you have to figure out how to make it work, like me and Tiffany had issues too, but we just figured out to be a team, he's like, well, that's easy for y'all, because y'all are married, me and her, we're not, we're not together, so our dynamic is different, you know, but I get you, I hear you, we have to be better at co-parenting, so he still listens to Derek, even though he makes it clear how you and Tiffany roll is not how me and her can roll, because we not together, and we don't live in the same house or even in the same city. So, boom, pow, pow. Now, we then see a couple of things of how the life between Kandula Condola and Lawrence is different, okay? We see she's at home with a crying baby, trying to make things, you know, happen. She was also falling asleep on the toilet while he's at work partying, not partying, but he's at work celebrating, drinking champagne, having a good time, and also at night, he run around fucking chicks on walls, okay, having good old sex. Lawrence always gives us a good sex scene every season. He never disappoints, okay? So again, just her having to be a mom, and he only is a dad when he's there. But when he's at home, he's not really dealing with the baby, even though we see him looking at the empty crib upset that you know, the kid isn't there, but he's still not every day having to deal with being a father, okay? Mm -hmm -hmm. So we do see that, you know, he texts her. Well, they have been texting um, because, he, again, he wants to get the kid overnight, you know, to give her a break, but, you know, to be a father. And she's been saying, like, I don't know about the whole week or whatever. So he then said, well, how about a day? How about I come to L.A.? Let me have him for a whole day. And she said, sure, even though she looked real uneasy about it. And so when he got there, the baby's crying, you know, so he tried to console the baby. And she said, well, I don't like how you're consoling the baby. I can console them better. Because, again, she's being the overprotective because she's a regular, everyday mom. That's her life. It's not really his life. It's her life. And he comes in like, you won't allow me to be a father. You forgetting that I'm the father. I, it's my kid too. And her thing is, nigga, you on here part time. You ain't here all the time, so you can't school me on how I want my child raised or whatever. And so they're fussing back and forth, just both getting out their frustrations. You know what I'm saying with him, like you know, you ruined my life. And I'm paraphrasing because he didn't say those exact words, but he like you know you you made a decision that changed my life. You know, and now you're pissed about it. And I think she feels the same. And again, she points out how you don't have to deal with what I, I'm a single mom. I don't trust you with my son. He was like, what? I'm the father. Yeah, you know, technically. But again, things can, you know, make, she don't, she hasn't seen him step up to the plate. Meaning she told him, I don't need your help. But again, she said that before the baby was here. You know, he told her, I don't, I didn't want children. Okay. He said that before the baby was here. And now they both feel differently now that the baby is here. So the big debate, I think, for this 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 episode is who's right and who's wrong. I'm looking like they both are. They both did not know the severity of how to co-parent when y'all live in two different cities. Okay. Now, should Lawrence had not taken a job or quit the job that he had got before he knew she was pregnant and stayed in LA? Some say yes, 
Some say no. Should she have moved to where he was? I don't think that's a good thing either. Um, but it's like the the big lesson for me is do not have kids with people you don't know. Okay. And that's the gotcha where it comes around here. Okay. Anyway, so them fuss in the back, going back and forth, and they're mad at each other. And when she then tells him, You can't take the baby. Okay, I don't trust you, my kid. You can't have him overnight, even though that was our agreement. And he like, look, I'm going to see my kid regardless of what you say. I'm going to do what I have to do to get my son. What? What did you get the f out my house? And so she kicks him out. But I feel like, is it wrong for Lawrence to mean I'm going to take you to court to at least get visitation with my kids so I don't have to come here. You can then deny me seeing or spending time with my son because you don't trust me. Well, I mean, what do you want me to do? What should we do? But again, each time with them, it was always them just awkwardly not knowing, you know, how to act around their child because they're strangers who have a kid who private parts touch but they don't know much about each other past that, okay? And a part of me feel like they both, again, resent the other one for choices that they've made. But now the baby's here. What are you going to do? So she kicks him out, and he takes his fight home. On the fight home, turbulence. What's happening? No. And I was like, they going to kill Lawrence? No. But no, a little turbulence. And as he was sitting there, looking out the window at the moon. And I remember last episode, Issa stood and was looking at the moon too. Mm-hmm. Just looking. And so seeing him on the plane, nervous, like, damn, if I was to die, you know, right now, what would the last conversation I had with her be that would then be my legacy with my son? And so this shit ain't working, okay? But gotta figure out something because it ain't working. So he calls her. And he like, look, this you were you right. This co-parenting thing, you know, from afar is not working. You know, what can we do? And then it goes off. I'm like, he got to move back home, you know, to be a, a real father. But she also has to accept him as a parent. She can't because she treats him like he isn't the parent, you know, a he, she treats him like he isn't the father. You know what I mean? And that's not good or bad, it's just the facts. So they both are fucking up. Lawrence, you left. You live in a different city, so you can't expect her to continually um, ask you what to do when you're not there. Because she also brought up how she had to go to the ER and had to call her sister. He was like, "What? why would you call me? She's saying, what would you do? Would you take a, a late night flight on a Tuesday to come here? No. So again, you want me to give you 100%, you know, um, uh, Responsible, responsible, girl, responsibilities in this, but you can't be here when I need you to be here because you don't live here. Okay, you don't live here. But his thing was, why wouldn't you even tell me that y'all had to go to the ER? So again, girl, back and forth, back and forth. But anyway, uh, we will see what happens the next episode and whatnot, okay? But that was a good episode to me. I will see y'all later. Do not forget to like the video, comment in the comment section, and to subs girl, subscribe to my channel, okay? Until next time, y'all. Peace.